and the last one has arrived. Let the combinatorics adventure begin. In this episode, we'll explore all the fundamental operations of combinatorics through clear examples. How many ways can these five cars finish the race? In a combinatorics problem, it's always a good idea to think about how many elements you want to arrange in order. We have five cars. In the next step, think about how many positions you want to examine for these five cars. We're interested in the complete result list, so we will assign the first five places among the five cars. Of course, the gold medalist will be at the beginning of the result list. But how many possible outcomes are there? Let's get started. A big race is unfolding. The cars are in the final stretch, but everyone is still in the game. Out of five cars, the first place winner will be chosen. The first car has crossed the finish line. There are still four cars on the track, so the second place will be decided among four cars. The second car has finished two. Now only three are left for third place. And so on, until the last racer crosses the finish line. To find the total number of race outcomes, we simply multiply these numbers together. The result is 120. Another way to say it is 5 factorial. Factorial means multiplying the number by all the whole numbers between it and 1. The symbol for factorial is an exclamation mark. This can generally be written as n times n minus 1 multiplied all the way down to 1, which equals n factorial. This ordering method distinguishes between the elements. So if we swap two cars, it counts as a different order. The factorial operation takes all such swaps into account. For the car task, the n was 5. Let's see another example. How many ways can five racers stand on the podium? For the first place, we can choose from five race cars. For the second place, we can choose from four cars, and for the third place, from three cars. So the podium can be arranged in 60 different ways from 5 racers. This task can also be written as 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. If we expand the factorials, we get the following fraction. The numerator and denominator both contain 2 times 1. This simplifies the fraction. It's clear that both the right and left sides match. Generally, we can state this as n elements can be arranged into n minus k places as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. It's important to note that here too, every element is distinguished from the others. Now let's crack open a safe. Our task is to figure out the four number code. The first question that comes to mind is, how many possible number combinations exist? Let's dive in. First, we need to determine how many numbers we can choose from. There are a total of 10 possible numbers for a code field, starting from 0 all the way up to 9. In the next step, let's consider how many times a number card can be reused. In a security code, numbers can repeat. So, we can always reselect the number cards. Let's see. For the first position, we can choose from 10 cards. For the second position, we again choose from 10 numbers and so on until the end of the code. That's a total of 10,000 possibilities. We can also write this as 10 to the fourth power. If you entered one combination per second into the safe, it would still take nearly three hours to try all possible combinations. Unless you're lucky. Let's generalize this case with repetition. If a number can be reused, this will always be the formula. We know that we have n number cards which was 10 in the previous example. The n number cards need to be distributed across k positions, which was 4 so far. Thus, we have k times n possibilities. In other words, n to the power of k. This is called permutation with repetition. Let's look at the next challenge. You need to buy three apples at a market in such a way that each apple is of a different type. At the market, there are 10 apple vendors. Each vendor sells a different type of apple, and each sells only one type. The question is, how many ways are there to choose which three vendors you buy apples from? Let's think this through. What matters is that we get three different apples. It doesn't matter if we buy the red apple first, and the yellow apple second, or the other way around. 
the result will be the same because we'll have one yellow and one red apple in our basket. Here, order doesn't matter for the outcome. We only need to focus on the selection possibilities. Let's start counting the possibilities. Out of 10 types of apples, we need to choose three types. So, we have three slots from which we can choose 10, then 9, then 8 apples. This is similar to the podium scenario in a race. So, the result is 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial. However, this considers order. For us, order doesn't matter, only the three different apples. Let's think, how many ways can we arrange three slots? Well, in three factorial ways. This needs to be divided out, as we've overcounted each result by this many arrangements. We can write this as 10 choose 3. If we're not concerned about order, this expression should always come to mind. The top number shows how many elements we can choose from. The bottom number indicates how many elements we want to select. So, we want to choose 3 apples out of 10. In general, we write this as choosing k elements from n elements. That's n choose k, which is calculated using the following formula. We always know how many elements we have, or in other words, the value of n, and how many k elements we want to choose. Just substitute these into the formula for such problems, and you'll have all the possibilities. Let's see what your chances are of winning the biggest European lottery jackpots. The lottery is structured so that there is an A field, which contains 50 numbers ranging from 1 to 50. Out of these 50 numbers, you must correctly guess 5. Then, in the B section, you must also correctly guess two numbers from 12 options. Simple, isn't it? During the lottery draw, if a number is drawn, it is not put back, and the order of the numbers drawn doesn't matter. The selection without order, as demonstrated in the previous example, must be applied to calculate all possible ticket combinations. Let's look at the A field. Here, you must choose 5 numbers out of 50. So, 50 choose 5 is the number of options. For the B field, you must choose 2 numbers out of 12, that is, 12 choose 2. Since both conditions must be satisfied, there is a multiplication between them. We know this because the task uses the word AND. The word AND always signifies multiplication. Altogether, there are 139,838,160 possible ticket combinations. This is equivalent to the combined population of France and the United Kingdom. So, if everyone filled out a ticket every week, and each ticket was unique, then one person would be guaranteed to win the jackpot. I hope you get lucky one day. You've received one final task. You need to go shopping at the fruit market again. This time, you need to buy six fruits. At the fruit stand, there are only two types of fruit available, apples and pineapples. The question is, how many ways can you decide which six fruits to pick? Do we distinguish between two apples? In this case, no, because they are both just apples. Does it matter in which order you place the fruits in your basket? No, no matter how you rearrange the apples and pineapples in the basket, they will still be the same fruits. We only distinguish between apples and pineapples. The task is to determine how many grouping possibilities there are for the apples and pineapples, given that there are six spots. Let's start grouping. First, we have no pineapples and six apples. Then, there's a possibility where we have one pineapple and five apples and so on. Notice that we can separate the two types of fruit with one divider. We need to count how many places we can position the divider. For this, this is the general formula. It's k minus 1 because if we have two types of fruit, one divider is sufficient to separate them. If we have three types of fruit, we need two dividers. If we have k types, we need k minus 1 dividers to separate n elements. In our case, we have six fruits with two different types of fruit and we can group them in seven ways in total. This is called a combination with repetition. Thank you for watching the video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to subscribe and like the video too. Be sure to check out the other videos in the course to continue building your knowledge. 
See you next time.